that's our Gulf Coast sunshine out there. You should be used to it. You've lived here long enough. It's a beautiful day because we're not going to sing showers of blessing, but God is giving the earth what it needs to help grow the, the trees and the grass to help make sure that we are still alive. So it's a blessing. I hate driving in it, but it's still a blessing. Amen? Amen. You can you can always trust that God is doing what is right for us. Amen? So with that thought in mind, go ahead and grab your hymnal and turn to hymn number 325. That's 325. We're going to stand up together and sing Trust and Obey. I was fairly certain that uh, that wasn't the one I picked, but you never know. It's at the end of a long day. You know, my eyes don't always work that well at this point. No, it's a beautiful song. But, uh, I don't know what page it is. There we go. Trust in the way. When we walk with the Lord, the light of His Word, what a glory. outside, a possibility of storms, but Lord, it's warm in here, it's, uh, uh, it's dry in here, and Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is descending here, and Lord, I just pray, uh, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts this evening, Lord, through the prayer time, through the uh, songs that we sing, and what a wonderful song we just sang, trust and obey, there's no other way, Lord, I just thank you for the songwriter who, uh, I believe, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in that song for us to sing. And then, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you bless the message tonight, that you speak to our hearts, and uh, Lord, encourage us through the Word of God tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate you being here tonight. It's a blessing to have all of you. And uh, if you would, just turn to the prayer list this evening, and uh, uh, we'll go through that very quickly. Uh, just continue to pray for Patty. Uh, we're still waiting for the call for the transplant uh, for her. Also, uh, for Brother Lee, uh, he is now on officially on the transplant list, and uh, we'll be waiting for a call for him also. Uh, then a Deputy Clint, I didn't get an opportunity to visit with him uh, when I was there. Uh, there are some difficulties and things going on. So uh, anyway, just continue to be in prayer for him, uh, and uh, just uh, uh, ask the Lord uh, as often as you think of Deputy Clint. If you see a police officer, think immediately Deputy Clint. And just lift him up in prayer. Uh, I believe that, that God will save him. It's just going to take some time 
uh, and he has to be submissive to that. Continue to pray for Journey, if you will, also for the Medrano family. Uh, Brother Jim Shirley, especially uh, this time of year, uh, like right now, it's muggy outside. It's horrible. He, it's really bad on his breathing. Uh, also, uh, pray for his wife, Miss Cassie. Uh, she has to take care of him and wait on him, and she's having some health issues also. Uh, and so, just right alongside uh, Brother Jim, uh, Miss Cassie. Uh, then Brother J. L. He is doing some better, but continue to pray for him as he recovers. Uh, Brother Dale Riddick. Uh, is recovering and he uh, is at home right now but waiting for the next treatment for his uh, uh, leukemia so continue to pray for him and then of course for Mama Shea uh, and uh, with her cancer treatment I'm sure there are others um, I have uh, our our missionary of the week is Brother uh, Robert and Jeanette Bottom and, and I have his prayer letter here this week and uh, just one note of course he, he talks about the family and, and all of that and the testimonies and those that have been saved, uh, but he just has a ministry update here, and I thought I kind of caught this uh, as I was reading through it. He says that we we do not have a shortage of inmates, and that definitely should be true. He said violence continues to increase in the Houston area. Recently, a bullet came through uh, one of our fifth floor windows in the jail. Thankfully, no one was hit. Because of short staffing, many of the security officers are being forced to work double shifts. The only thing consistent the jail is. Uh, in the jail is constant change. Pray, by God's grace, we can still minister the word. And uh, so do uh, remember uh, them in prayer. I know that uh, uh, I was talking to Brother Jimmy, and uh, they're short, short-handed because a lot of the officers, because of the violence towards the police officers and the uncertainty of going to a call and being shot or whatever, I mean, they are now just Johnny on the spot. We, I rode with them when I was there during spring break. And uh, uh, one officer didn't respond to a call. Uh, they, they kept checking on him, doing a, a check on him as he was out with, on a call, and he wasn't responding. And so they sent the officer, I mean, immediately. And I mean, we were going at a high rate of speed to that location uh, because, but uh, Brother Jimmy explained to me, of course, their concern uh, in situations like that. Uh, but also, uh, there's an area, a dead spot, where their handhelds don't work, but they're car radio works and so his handheld wasn't working and so that was a thing but uh, it was kind of exciting to go through uh, the streets of the county at the high rate of speed you know and <laughs> run through red lights and all that fun stuff of course it's dangerous too because uh, you know uh, at least here in Texas because people won't stop for anything and I was impressed there in Columbus when they saw sirens and heard, heard sirens and saw the light they, they immediately moved to the shoulder of the road uh, in uh, Baytown, they hear lights, and they just keep all five lanes of Garth Road blocked, and the police, police or the EMS or fire or whatever is trying to get around them. You know, just move out of their way. Okay, They have a call to go to, and if it was your loved one that was that they were going to help or assist or yourself, I guarantee you, you would not want them impeded. And uh, I wish that everybody in the city of Baytown and the state of Texas and the world would hear that message. Uh, because it's important. Uh, but do pray for our police officers. Uh, uh, their lives are in danger uh, daily. They've always been, but it's getting worse and worse. And uh, so be a part of that, if you will. Um, uh, if you have somebody you'd like to add to the list this evening, we'll start on this side, work this way, and then uh, uh, we'll have prayer. Anybody in this section over here? Brother Kurt? Uh, please continue to pray for my uh, co-worker, Rolando Williams, for salvation. Okay. All right. Anybody else in that section? All right. Next section. Section right here. All right. Uh, Ms. Crystal. The microphone. <laughs> Uh, keep my brother Alex Keeler in prayer as he's attending Master's Bible College. Uh, he just says pray for spiritual growth. He says I feel overwhelmed because I'm going to school, I'm going to work, I'm married now, and I'm trying to find because I find he says I find it hard just to spend time with God, so I have to do it in the car before I go to work. And he says I want to be a pastor, you know. And he starts worrying. I said, Well, guess what, Alex? Everybody has that problem. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and so just keep him in prayer. And Kaylee, that's his wife. Uh, also. Uh, Pray for me. April 18th is a big PT test. Um, I'm on a detox and try to take weight off my body. And I know it's the 
day I was able to run faster without getting exhausted, but just, I got to do 11 more minutes than what I did. <laughs> I'm just getting nervous. I guess I'm feeling a little bit stressed out. So, okay. thank you. All right. Anybody else in this section right here? All right. Maybe the other section over there. Uh, Miss Deborah. Yes, keep Patricia in your prayers, please. She really wanted to be here tonight, but she cannot walk. She's having a lot of trouble with her anchor, ankle. Okay. All right. Uh, Miss Helen. Please pray for my family in England. Um, two sisters, in laws, um, just gave birth. Separate sisters. One is premature, really premature, not even two pounds. And, and um, the other one, maybe the mother has done drugs, or I don't know what it was, but that baby's having problems too. So please, you know, keep them in prayer. Well, sorry, how about before you walk there? For there. there please keep my wife, Catherine, in your prayers. Tomorrow's her surgery. I have a uh, friend out in California, her name's Mona Minor. Uh, I'm sure she needs to be saved, and she's having some financial troubles right now, so let's just remember her. All right. Further, uh, Kyle. Just, continue. <clears throat> just continue praying for uh, my brother Nathan to move out here. Okay. Ridley. My stepdaughter's uh, father, Randy Schaefer, has four stage cancer. Yeah. And please uh, keep stepdaughter Tony in prayers for healing. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Um, other church, go ahead and use some prayer. Dear Lord God, thank you for this opportunity we have, as I always pray, my Lord, to stop in the middle of the week and to come into uh, your house and to sit down with your people and hear from your word, to feel your Holy Spirit wrap around us, my Lord God, and to give us peace and comfort. Uh, I am very thankful for this time. I know that uh, Satan tried to keep me from coming tonight, and uh, I'm sure he was, is in everybody else's life here, too, as well, uh, just uh, picking where he can pick and hitting what he can I'm thankful for this time we have. Just want to stop before we do anything else, Lord. Just lift up these folks that are on our hearts and minds. Ask you please help each one in the way that they need. Uh, please touch each heart in each life. Lord, I, I pray especially for those who need salvation. Would you please uh, work in their, their soul, my Lord God. Show them that emptiness, that, that Jesus uh, space that they need to be filled, that they're trying to fill with everything else. And Lord God, please give us the wisdom, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit to be the proper witness to these folks. Oh Lord, I, I look at you as Patty and uh, Brother Lee, that you please uh, give them, a, we're asking you to just give them a full set of working organs, however you want to do that. If we flint for salvation, please, Lord, a little journey for healing from those seizures the Madrano family as they go through all that is happening to them right now, and, and special uh, prayers for uh, Mr. Madrano as he's going through his sickness. I look at you, uh, Brother Jim, and Miss Cassie. Ask uh, strength upon Brother Jim's lungs, and, and uh, Miss Cassie strengthening her body and give her peace, please, Lord, and, and strength to take care of them both. I look to you, Miss Tony, uh, healing for her, uh, Randy Schaefer, uh, please, as he has stage four cancer. I pray for you, please, work in his life and heal him if you be your will and uh, use him for your glory. Uh, Brother J.L., uh, Bill Riddick with his cancer. Uh, Nathan Peak, my Lord, is he, uh, I believe he, he needs to be down here, or over here, as it were, uh, to be with the family, Lord God, I pray that if, uh, if that be your will, you please move him here, uh, get him with the rest of his family, and get him uh, encouraged and serving you, Lord. I uh, to you, Mama Shay, uh, I should please continue to heal her, strengthen her, give her doctors wisdom, 
uh, other to uh, Alex Keeler uh, as he's uh, dealing with college and, and marriage and everything he's going through. Uh, Lord, very stressful time. I ask you please bring him peace, bring him wisdom, Lord. I uh, give him that uh, wisdom about spending some alone time. I, I understand that sometimes the uh, best alone time is sitting in a car driving. Lord, but I ask you please keep him safe as he does that while he talks to you. Other uh, things, Crystal, as she's going through PT. And I have her PT test. I pray you please strengthen her body. Uh, and, and get her through that. I'll give it to you. Uh, Miss Patricia, I ask you please strengthen her ankles, uh, stop those from hurting and, and giving her problems. I'll give it to you, Miss Helen's family uh, over there in England, my Lord God, specifically these, these two ladies who have had these babies. Uh, Lord, we pray, we lift up to you their children, ask your strength and your healing on them, and ask you please give their doctors wisdom. We also lift up the, the mothers to you, Lord, that we, we ask you please work in their hearts and their lives, make them the best mothers possible for those babies and the fathers as well. I ask you please touch them. I have no idea what's going on, but Lord, uh, children need both mothers and fathers. And I ask you please be with them and uh, bless that family. I look at you, Catherine, and she's uh, going to have surgery. Please give her doctor's wisdom and heal her more. Well, Let her take on a minor. Uh, well, she's having some financial difficulties. I pray you use this situation to please bring her to a saving knowledge of your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. I look to you, uh, brother and sister, bottom Lord, they're doing a really fantastic job over there. I'm, I'm always so impressed with them and, and the wonderful focus and attention they give uh, to your ministry there. They minister to some of the worst of us. Uh, Lord, those, those that society has thrown away. Uh, Lord, and they're doing your work, seeking out those kind of folks and, and just spreading the gospel. And Lord, I ask you, Say, bless their ministry, uh, Lord God, and I, I pray you just use them mightily for them for the Holy Spirit. And use them greatly, Lord. I lift up our, to you, our uh, peace officers, Lord God, as, as they go around our nation, it is a bad time to be a peace officer, as uh, there are many out there who are uh, literally gutting for them. I ask you, please, keep them safe, wrap your uh, protection around them, and Lord, just as important, even more important, I pray that our brothers and sisters and Christ, that are part of, of that contingency, that they uh, just get the boldness and the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom to spread your word, to talk to the brothers and sisters in arm, to, to share the gospel. I pray you please bring our peace force to you, Lord God. I look at you, our nation, as we're in a great, great need for a revival. Uh, some people think that our government, we just changed the government enough that it's going to it's not our government, Lord. The problem is our people who have turned their backs on you. The problem is, oh Lord God, I understand your children who have turned their backs on you. And we follow the world instead of following your word. And I ask you, please, get our hearts and minds right with you. And I pray that we follow 2 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Chronicles 7 14. And we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Would you please, Lord God, heal our land? I ask you please protect our military as they're out there fighting uh, for our freedom and for our peace. I pray for those in other nations all around the world, people who are seeking the truth. I ask that you please show them the truth that is your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. And in that precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and grab the hymn and turn with me to hymn number 316. And you know, uh, as we're going through the prayer, we can see around us that there are plenty of problems that Satan will throw in our path. But if you will follow this song, I think you will find the answer to your problems. Stand with me as we sing 316, I have decided to follow Jesus. Turning back, no turning 
behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 the word of God says let us hold <coughs> excuse me let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he that is faithful that promise hold fast without wavering one of the uh, I like to study successful people find out why they were successful And one of the things that you find as you study is that they don't turn back. Even in the face of, of great adversity, they don't turn back. Walt Disney had to go to 300 different banks to get a loan to make his first Mickey Mouse cartoon. 300 banks. A man once criticized Henry Ford his Model T production and said, you'll never get anybody to buy that car if you only have it in black. To which Mr. Ford replied, hey, my customers can have it in any color they want as long as it's black. It's an attitude that says, I'm doing it right. I don't care what the world says. We should have that attitude. I'm doing things the right way, no matter what the world says. And I know we're going to learn something about that tonight. I have full confidence in that. So let's sit back and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us something and to grow and to be able to face the world and say, I'm doing it right. As we accept the offering, I'm going to ask. For the Jason Leeson prayer. Let us pray. Father, as we come before you tonight, we first want to thank you for this day that you allowed us to enjoy. Father, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Father, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we thank you that we get to come and worship you tonight. It's a joyous day to be in the house of the Lord, Father. We thank you for that uh, opportunity that we get to come and uh, worship you openly and freely, Father. We thank you uh, for all that you do for us, Father. We helping us throughout the day and throughout the week. Father, we ask that, that you help us again, even after Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday is over, Father. Help it help, uh, not to end in our hearts, Father. Help us remember the reason for why we are here, and that is to spread your gospel to others that are lost, Father. Father, we ask you to bless this offering. Use it for your work and will, Father, that souls might be saved and lives might be changed. Father, we uh, thank you for the service. We ask you to fill Brother Jim full of the Holy Spirit tonight. Uh, give us uh, the words that we need to hear, Father. Uh, we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. chapter number 5, and then secondly, I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 6, Psalm chapter 6, Matthew chapter 5, Psalm chapter 6. We're going to read Psalm 6, it's, uh, it's 10 verses, 
and then we're going to read one verse in Matthew chapter 5. We're studying on the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and uh, uh, we are at uh, the second uh, rung of the ladder, which is uh, what we're going to speak on tonight. And as we look at that, we're going to look at uh, Psalm 6, and we're going to kind of lay the foundation there. While you're finding that, I wish you would remember my son Michael in prayer. Uh, he's been had a number of issues over the last uh, couple of years, and uh, noticed that uh, he was having difficulty hearing. I thought maybe it was wax built up in his ear, and I took him to the doctor on Monday, and uh, it wasn't wax built up in his ear. We have a uh, appointment on the 13th. Uh, with the ENT in Houston uh, to check his hearing. He, he had, his right ear has always been uh, uh, had hearing loss in it, and uh, now we, we're not knowing what's going to take place here. So he is having difficulty in that. I would appreciate you praying for him. And also, uh, Adrian is homesick this evening, too, and uh, he's got, I'm sure it's, it's allergies. I don't know how he would have allergies, but anyway. Psalm chapter number 6, I invite you to stand with me in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. We're going to read 10 verses of Psalm 6, and then we're going to go uh, to Matthew chapter number 5. Psalm 6 says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for, uh, for thy mercy's sake. For in, the, in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning all night. Make I'm uh, all night. Let me try that again. I missed the punctuation. I am weary with my groaning all night. Make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Pay close attention to that verse. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of mine enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Now, Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Speaking to you this, this evening on the subject, when mourning brings comfort. When mourning brings comfort. May we pray. Fathers, we bow before you this evening again. We ask your blessings upon the preaching of your word. Lord, you have provided a uh, very clear and plain teaching in the Word of God. Lord, you've revealed yourself to us in all of your holiness and righteousness and your judgment. Lord, you've uh, uh, given us, Lord, words to live by, wisdom to stand on. And Lord, we know that if we follow the counsel that's in the Word of God, that we would, uh, Lord, uh, live a cleaner life, that we would live a life that would be more pleasing to thee. And Father, I just pray tonight, Lord, that we might learn something that would draw us closer and closer and closer to you. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As we're studying through the Sermon on the Mount, and of course, last week we studied the uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And this week we are studying verse number four, blessed are they that mourn. And I said last week that if we look at these nine uh, uh, the attitudes that we're studying right here, uh, and we pictured a ladder standing here on the platform, the first rung, the first step uh, on that ladder would be those that are poor in spirit. And we talked about last week that, they, that are, those that are poor in spirit, the word poor there uh, means those that are utterly poor. I mean, to <laughs> so poor that they have nothing. And we're talking about that type of, of person uh, who is literally you might say would be homeless, uh, would be without the necessities of life, uh, would have nothing. And of course, for those that serve Lord, serve the Lord, they are the happiest people. Believe me, I, I, I've been around people that have nothing and 
They find things to praise God about. God has been such a blessing to them. Now, that first rung, when we talk about uh, the poor in spirit, we're not talking about those who are so poor uh, that they can't buy their next meal or they can't uh, have a place to live uh, because we're talking about a spiritual setting here. And if we lose sight of the fact that we're talking about a spiritual setting and a spiritual relationship with God, we lose everything. We need to understand that the poor in spirit are those that are poor spiritually, and those that are poor spiritually are not the ones that lack money. Okay? Money has, ha, is no, uh, has no position in this. It's not talking about those who are so poor that they have nothing else, so they just trust the Lord. So they're, they're, they, they are, that's their spirit, and that's who they are. What he's talking about here is those who would, would bring themselves down or to the place, I have nothing. I'm go, I mean, what do I have to offer God that's going to bring him or bring me in closer relationship with him? I have nothing. I mean, I can't get to heaven on my own works, on my own merit. I can't get to heaven by, by doing anything. I mean, if I had a million dollars and I stood down at the, uh, uh, at the interstate, at I-10 and Garth, and, and every homeless person that came up there, every person with a sign that said, well, work for food, or every person said, help me feed my children, or help me pay my rent, or whatever, and I just doled out money every time uh, somebody stood there on the street corner and gave them whatever they needed, uh, and I said, well, God, look what I did. I gave a million dollars to the people standing on the street corner, uh, and and so I have I have a right to be in heaven. God says no, you don't. You know I go through the the hospitals, uh, San Jacinto Methodist Hospital down here. Or you go down to Methodist Hospital or Herman Hospital or what you know the Debakey Heart Center. And the reason those hospitals are there because somebody was philanthropic. They gave money for that purpose. They, they, they're helping people. And so let's just use DeBakey as, a, as an example. Uh, if he gave his heart center, uh, he gave his life to helping people uh, doing heart surgeries and developed a number of, uh, uh, of different techniques and things that helped in, uh, in, in helping people with hearts and, uh, and all the, that, that has gone along with that. And you think about it, now, this man's done all this, and so he can stand before God one day and say, well, God, I get to get in heaven because I developed all of these techniques to help people who had heart trouble. I, I deserve to get in heaven because I gave a lot of my money. I don't know how many uh, millions of dollars the Bakey himself gave towards the heart center. I don't know that. But if he gave a dime and he said, look, I, I developed the techniques, I did the surgeries, I saved people's lives, I did all of this. I even gave money to help and assist. I deserve to be in heaven. God says, no, you don't. It's not any of that that causes us or gives us the right to be in heaven. And so all of us stand at a level ground. All of us stand at, at a level place at the foot of the cross. We have to have Jesus or nothing. Even studying through the messages for the for the resurrection sunday for easter sunday you know you stop and you consider that there's a, a thief on the right hand side a thief on the left hand side they were mocking jesus and finally one of them came to a senses of well wait a minute here we are we're hanging on this cross justly and him unjustly he, he did nothing wrong lord remember me when thou enterest into thy kingdom this day shalt thou be with me in paradise jesus one accepted and one rejected. You see, it, it's, it's not a matter of, <laughs> of our position. It's not a matter of our wealth. It's not a matter of anything. It's where we are with Jesus. And what we talked about last week, we came down to the realization that the poor in spirit are those that are willing to submit themselves to God and his mercy. The humble in spirit, you might say. And we're going to get to the meek and, uh, and, 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 and on one of the rungs here, but he's talking about those who have, have, have given themselves in humility to say, I'm nothing. I deserve nothing. I have nothing. I am nothing. The poor in spirit. 
Now, the poor in spirit, when you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm nothing. And I receive your Son as my Lord and Savior. I receive the forgiveness of my sin. I receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. At that point in time, we are humbling ourselves. We're giving God that, that humility. But if we stand up and go, well, look at me. Look who I am. You're still nothing. You're still at the same position that all of us are. Sinners saved by grace. But we get that first step, that, that first of, uh, of knowing that the kingdom of heaven is ours. We did chapel today and, uh, and I, I talked uh, about uh, Luke chapter number uh, 11, wasn't it? I think somewhere. Anywhere. And uh, we were talking about the, the ten lepers. And they stood afar off and they saw Jesus and they hollered out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And they, they cried out with a loud voice because they couldn't come into his presence because of the leprosy. They knew that. They knew they had nothing. They knew that there was no hope for them without Jesus. And Jesus said, go and show thyself to the priest. And as they were going toward sh to show themselves for the priest, they were, they were cleansed. And one looked down and saw, hmm, I got... Ten fingers down instead of eight. Wait, my nose is there again. My ears back. Uh, and realized that he was cleansed. And he turned around and, and, and ran to Jesus and called out to Jesus and glorified him and thanked him for what Jesus had done. And he says, weren't there ten cleansed? Where's the nine? You see, the application I made to our students today, and it, and it bears... To, to, to the lesson today is this. A lot of people, yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. But where are the nine? Where are those that are going to serve the Lord? Where are those that are going to, uh, to pass out tracts and give the gospel out? Where are those that are going to honor him and give and tithe and all of these things? Where are those that are going to, to participate and participate in the work of God. Many of us are, are glad to be saved. We're not just glad to do anything. And we want to make excuse like Moses. Well, I'm not eloquent. Or uh, others who, well, I just can't do that. I can't, you know. We're all on the level ground. And God wants us to serve him. He wants us to be a part of that. And so this is the building process. This is the growing process. And so not only are we uh, to the place of humility and realizing we're nothing, then we move up to the next step because then he says, blessed are they that mourn. Now the word mourn here is the same word that we would get is if we were at a funeral and we were weeping and crying over a person who passed away. Mourn. Cry out. Weep. When we, we were looking at, at Psalm 6, notice uh, back where Psalm 6 and verse number uh, verse number 6 says, I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of mine enemies. What, what is the psalmist saying? He said, you know, he said, I spend the long night in weeping, crying out. <laughs> I make my bed to swim. What's he saying? He said, I, I've just filled my bed with tears. I've cried out. I've called out. Now, the, the spiritual application of this is the fact that we... As God's children, if we've humbled ourselves and we've taken that first step, then that's don't, that's just the lights coming on for the parking lot. In the wintertime, they come on earlier. Now it's getting, as we progress through the summer, you won't hear that anymore, okay? But when it sounds like gunshots going off back there, nobody's shooting. Brother Tim's up there with his gun. He's going to protect us all, okay? I hope he is up there anyway. 
are you are you waiting for Tim? Hey, he's waving, so he must be. I must woke him up anyway. All right. Now then, the <laughs> let's get back to the lesson here. Okay. Now we're going to that second rung, and and, and he's saying now we we're weeping, we're mourning. This is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual thing. We weep and we mourn over our wickedness and our sin. Because we're looking at it from the spiritual side of this. We're looking at it from God's standpoint. We're looking at it uh, from what God is saying and what, well, how we should respond to God. I mean, there should not be anything in our lives that is contrary to the Word of God that we're not confessing, that we are not weeping and crying. I mean, it ought to literally upset us when we are disobedient to God. Michael's not here. Well, he's over there to defend himself. But when he was little, all I had to do was look at him. I had that fatherly look. I don't know what the fatherly look was, but I had that fatherly look. I, I don't care where we were at. If he got a little antsy, if he got a little moving, and, and all I have to do is look at him. And that stopped. I mean, the child, <laughs> I think the maybe the last spanking he had was like when he was six years old, literally. Because all I have to do is look at him, and he knew. I've messed up. And I'd see tears well up in his eyes. And, Dad, I'm so sorry. I, I, I should... I mean, he, he learned from a, from a very young age that, that obedience was required. I wish other parents would learn to teach their children that obedience is required. My day at school would be a whole lot easier if parents knew and would teach their children to behave themselves. But you see, we want that for our children. We want that for our the people in our community, in our society, we want that for their children, but do we really want that for ourselves? Let me ask it on this side. We want our children to be obedient. We want, our ch we want the children in our society to be obedient and do what they're supposed to do, but are we really wanting ourselves to be obedient? You see... I learned something when I was a kid. It was called double standard. As my dad blew the smoke in my face, he said, don't be smoking these nasty things. Well, guess who smoked these nasty things? My dad said, don't drink these things. They're bad for you. As he sat there and popped a top. And when he wasn't wanting around, and man, I popped that top too. I didn't do a whole lot of the drinking of it because that stuff's nasty. I mean, I about killed myself learning to smoke. I can't imagine what it was like to, to like that stuff. I don't know what they talk about, Brother Corey, about being smooth and all that fun stuff. Man, that stuff's nasty. That's all I can say. Rotten mash, mash that's all it is, rotten. And then you drink that stuff, and it's still rotten. But my daddy said, don't do that. My daddy would let out a string of words that would peel the paint off the wall, curl the hair in your ears, and tell me, now, son, don't you say that word. I learned about double standards. And I'll be honest with you, many of us have double standards when it comes to our Christian life and our outside church life. Hello? What we are at church and what we are at work are two different things. That's not supposed to be. But it happens. I mean, you know, somebody comes into work and you're there, and, and, and Brother Gary used to work with me at Foley's. I hired him, and he was my night supervisor. And he and I would, would overlap. I hope that he could tell you that while I worked at Foley's that I conducted myself as a Christian. That I did what I was supposed to do at work as well as at church. I hope that my family would tell you that I was the same person at home as I was 
at church. I would hope that the kids would say, I'm the same same person at school as I am at church. I have a number of kids from teaching in the public school that that went to Sterling that, that their kids are either in our school or Miss B. Harry, Megan, is teaching in our school. Her mother's working <laughs> in our office. And, and I would hope to say that they knew me in the public school and they know me here and that I'm the same person that I was then as I am now. Hopefully better. You see, our lives are be, to be, be conformed to the image of Jesus. We are to live our life as if he is living in us and he is living in us. It's amazing to me through the years of ministry that, that I have found, I mean, <laughs> I've had wives come to me, I've had kids come to me, and, and, and I mean, I had a parent sitting in my office the other day, and I was talking to her about her her child that was doing had done something in the school, and uh, he was going home for a little while, and and uh, she goes, oh well, he never does that at home. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. you know, these kids tell me when they use foul language, and oh well, I, you know, it just slipped. If if it's not in your vocabulary, it doesn't just slip. I mean, I had a vocabulary that would peel the paint, but I will guarantee you. When God saved me, the vocabulary went out the window and those words are not resident in my mind or in my life and they don't just slip out when I get angry or slip out when I'm in conversation. Something's different. Somebody who knew that family goes, uh, well, <laughs> if you only knew what went on in that home. I had another kid come to me and, 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 and tell me, he said, you know, Mr. Lamb, he said, I just need a safe haven. I need a safe place right now. After the parent was telling me that, you know, this is a safe place for my child and, and my child is, you know, taken care of and, and, all, and, and the child later comes to me and says, Mr. Lamb, I need a safe haven. My parents are screaming and hollering at each other and they're angry at each other and I just need a safe place to be right now. You see, what's going on at home and what's being said are two different things. As I said in chapel this morning, my mother-in-law used, mother used to always say, you know, your actions speak so loud I can't hear a word you're saying. In other words, what you're doing and what you're saying are two totally different things. When we come to the place in our spiritual life and what Jesus is teaching these disciples here is, look, there's a difference in the life that you're to live and the life that you were living. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Something needs to take place in the heart of the individual that when they get saved, the old goes away. There is nothing in my life, in the old life, that, that I really wanted to keep. I was miserable. I didn't like my life. That's why I started go, reading the Bible. That's why I started praying. That's why I started going to church. We didn't go to church. We didn't have that relationship. And, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to push that life away, and I wanted to turn to the life uh, of, a, of a, uh, a good life, a life that was pleasing to God, a life that brought me joy and brought me comfort and brought me peace because I didn't have that. See, I was that kid that needed that safe haven. I was that kid that needed a safe place to be. And I didn't have that. And so as a result of that, God moved in and God worked in my life. And, and I believe that, that when we go back to, to our text, he said, blessed are they that mourn, cry out, weep, for they shall be comforted. They shall be comforted. If you take your Bible and turn to John chapter number 14, you've heard these verses before, but they'll help you. In John chapter 14, Jesus is instructing his disciples. He's just come from the 
uh, upper room. They're headed to the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows he's fixing to be taken into captivity. He knows that he's fixing to die on the cross of Calvary and pay the sin debt for every woman, man, and child uh, that, that lives upon uh, this earth. And he begins in verse number 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, I, there's some things that are fixed to transpire. There's some things that are fixed to happen. But don't let your heart be troubled. What was he trying to do? He's trying to say, I want you to be comforted. You remember when Peter wept, uh, when Peter uh, betrayed the Lord three times and he heard the rooster crow, he, he went out and wept bitterly. Why did he weep bitterly? Because he knew what he had done. He knew that he had denied the Lord three times. He knew that, uh, that he had sinned egregiously against God. And he went out and wept bitterly. When you, when you think about that, you know, what, what Peter did, then he came to the Lord. Not that he wasn't saved, but he came to a full conversion in his life. Something changed in his life. Jesus tried to prepare them. He said, now, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Come over here uh, again to chapter 14, and notice, if you will, in verse number 16. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Now, that word comforter, comforted, comforter, comfortless, all come the same from the same word that is found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4, he says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's the same Greek word, a variation of it, but it is the same Greek word. It means, what, what it means is, is to come alongside of. To comfort someone. When my wife passed away, my boys came in, and we stood there, and I came. Along, they were standing at the bed, and, and, and they were looking at Mom, and, and, and they were weeping, and, and I, I went alongside of them to comfort them. You get the picture? I was their what? Their comforter. And Jesus says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Comforted. And I think what he's talking about here is that the Holy Spirit of God moves in. First of all, we get the kingdom of God, rung number one. Secondly, we get the comforter, the one who comes alongside of us, the one that, that, that comforts us in our, in, our, in our problems, in our issues. You know, it's not just the sin that we, that we deal with in our daily lives, but it's other issues too. How many of you mourn and cry over a, a wayward child? Or over a friend that needs to be saved and, and, and is refusing to listen to the message? How many have, have, have mourned over uh, something that has happened uh, within their family? Not just the loss of an individual, but I'm talking about uh, issues in the family or issues at work or issues. And, and you go home and you mourn and you cry over that. But you've got somebody that's going to come alongside of you and bring you comfort. The Holy Spirit of God. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He says, blessed are they that he said, I will send you another comforter. Come down, if you will, to verse number 26 of John chapter 14. Notice what he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
He repeated the same thing he said in chapter number one, ver, or chapter fourteen, verse number one. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, that when the Comforter comes in, he gives us comfort, but he also brings peace. The world cannot give you peace. You go to the doctor and they give you that, that, that awful news of, uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a disease that, uh, that is terminal. And then they want to comfort you and say, well, if you take this medication and you take this treatment and you do this, everything's going to be all right. But all of us are adults in this room. All of us have seen people that have gone through those treatments and gone through those medications and gone through all of that and came out on the other side not all right. That doesn't bring a whole lot of peace. That doesn't bring a whole lot of comfort. Because we know, we, we've seen examples. We've also seen the examples where somebody's gone through that and, and experienced that, gone through all the treatments, gone through all the medications, gone through, and came out on the other side well. But in their mind, at every follow-up visit, at the six-month period, and then at the yearly, and then uh, along the way, their mind, every time they go to the doctor, they're thinking, what are they going to find this time? That's not peace. That's not comfort. You see, the only one that can give us true peace and true comfort is God himself. We place everything in his hand. And if we would learn to place everything in his hand, we may weep and, and, and mourn and cry. Poor David, I mean, look at him. He, King David, he, what he went through. I mean, he mourned over the loss of his son Absalom. Absalom, Absalom! He cried out. He mourned for him. In fact, it, it, to the kingdom, it became embarrassing to some of the leaders. He said, look, you're going to have to stop this. He was a traitor. He was a betrayer. You can't keep going like this. You see, our only comfort, our only strength, our only hope is in the Lord himself. He brings that great peace. I've probably learned more over the last few months about that than I've ever known in my entire life. Because he's the, I mean, I have family, and I appreciate my family. I have friends, and I appreciate my friends. But in the wee hours of the morning, when my tears are floating in my bed, and there's no one there, I'm so thankful that I have God that's there to comfort give me strength and help me through the day. I'm so thankful that when I have to deal with my sons and, and their tears and what they're dealing with, the loss of the mother, that I can stand alongside of them and give them comfort because the Lord stood alongside of me to give me comfort. You see, the disciples were not perfect. And not one of them would stand before you today and say, I, I, I was a perfect disciple. I did everything Jesus wanted me to do. It's a process. A continual process. I'm so short that, man, when I do something on a ladder, i got to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Sometimes if I'm going to have to be on the ladder for a while, I, I, I take into consideration all these things that I've got to have. The screwdrivers, the, the pliers, the, whatever it is that I've got to do. And I've, I've even made me a little uh, wood wedge that I clamp onto the top of my ladder to work off of so I don't have to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. Because these old knees just don't go up and down like they used to. But you still got to go up the ladder. you got to come down the ladder. you got to go up the ladder. 
come down the ladder. Sometimes we take rung number one and to get to rung number two, and then we've got to get off rung one to go get back on it again, and then you miss it again. You got the progression up. Sometimes we, we regress. We, have, we step down. But God is so merciful and so gracious. That he's right there with us all the time. And when we mourn and we weep over our failures, we mourn and we weep over something that, that uh, we can't control, he says, you will be comforted. You will be comforted. The comforter has come. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the truths of the Word of God. And Lord, I, I pray as we look at these, at these Beatitudes, Lord, we stepped on rung number one last week. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This week we touched on the blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, I just pray tonight, Lord, that Lord, if we're dealing with something in our own life, an issue that we're dealing with, Lord, that you, Lord, would help us through these issues. To realize, Lord, that you're right there with us in our failures, in our pains, our sorrows, our griefs. As the psalmist cried out to you, as he weeps through the night, Lord, that he knows you're right there. Psalmist said in Psalm 30, verse 5, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. One of the great blessings of heaven found in Revelation 21, 5, is that there will be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death. Lord, I just pray, Lord, number one, that we would learn, Lord, to place everything in your hand. It's not going to negate or end the, the things that we go through. We're going to weep. We're going to sorrow. We're going to sigh. Or there may be sins in our life that we call the setting sins. Or we struggle with those and we cry over those but we know that you're right there with us, comforting and bringing the peace that we need. Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that needs that comfort and that strength, I pray, pray they find it in you at the altar. Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of life, that they would come to know him tonight. Of course, in the precious name of Jesus, we